Have you ever wondered why we seek companionship? Why is marriage such a universal institution? It's a fascinating question, isn't it? This innate longing for companionship is something we all experience regardless of our cultural or geographical backgrounds. It seems to be an inherent part of being human, something that transcends borders and unites us all. But why is that? Could it be that there's more to it than just human nature? Could there be a divine origin to this universal phenomenon? From the heart of Africa to the bustling cities of Europe, from the snow-capped mountains of Asia to the sunny shores of Australia, marriage is a revered institution. It's a testament to our shared need for companionship, for someone to share in our joys, our sorrows, our triumphs, and our trials. This brings us to an intriguing perspective, one that takes us back to the very beginning, to the dawn of creation. You see, the Bible in the book of Genesis provides an interesting narrative on the origin of marriage. It paints a picture of a divine plan, a purposeful design for human companionship. Intrigued? Let's delve into the biblical perspective of marriage as depicted in the book of Genesis. In the Bible, the book of Genesis presents the first marriage. Genesis 2.18.25 25 offers an insightful perspective on this divine institution. Diving into the verses, we unearth the profound narrative of the first marriage. God, in his infinite wisdom, recognized that it is not good for the man to be alone. Genesis 2.18 This declaration underscores the inherent need for companionship embedded within the human spirit. As our story unfolds, we see God's divine plan in action. He decided to make a helper suitable for him. Genesis 2.18 This helper was none other than Eve created from Adam's rib. This act was not random, but rather it was symbolic. It emphasized the fact that Eve was not a separate entity, but a part of Adam, his equal, meant to complete him, not compete with him. Genesis 2.24 further elaborates on God's vision for marriage, stating, that is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. This verse highlights the deep bond of unity that marriage is intended to foster. It's about two becoming one, a fusion of souls, a mingling of spirits, a joining of lives. This account of the first marriage is not just a tale of the past. It is the blueprint of the divine design for marriage a design that underscores the complementary nature of the union. It emphasizes the importance of togetherness, unity, and mutual support. It tells us that marriage is not just a social construct, but a divine institution ordained and orchestrated by God himself. These verses illustrate the divine orchestration of the first marriage, setting the stage for all subsequent unions. Marriage as per Genesis was not a human invention, but a divine arrangement. But what is its purpose? Delving into the Holy Book, we find that the purpose of marriage is twofold. On one hand, it serves to address the issue of loneliness. Genesis 2.18 quotes God as saying, It is not good for the man to be alone. This statement is profound considering the context. Here was Adam in the Garden of Eden, surrounded by all of God's magnificent creation, yet something was missing. Despite the beauty of nature, the companionship of animals, and the very presence of God, Adam was alone. This teaches us that human beings are inherently social creatures designed to thrive in the company of one another. The second purpose of marriage is to provide companionship. This companionship is not merely about cohabitation or procreation, but about a deep-seated connection between two individuals. When God created Eve from Adam's rib, he said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This signifies a bond that transcends the physical, touching the very core of our being. It's about finding a suitable helper, a partner who complements you, who helps you grow, and with whom you can share life's joys and sorrows. Marriage, therefore, is about companionship in the deepest sense of the word. It's about sharing, caring, supporting, nurturing, and loving. It's about walking together on the path of life, hand in hand, heart in heart. It's about experiencing the world together, growing together, and building a life together. This divine arrangement of marriage is not about finding the perfect person, but about loving the imperfect person perfectly. It's about accepting each other with all our flaws and imperfections and still choosing to love, to cherish, and to be there for each other. So, in essence, the purpose of marriage, as stated in Genesis, is to address loneliness and provide companionship. It is to create a bond that is so strong, so profound, and so deep that two people become one. 
Thus, marriage serves a divine purpose, uniting two individuals in a shared companionship. Like any relationship, marriage comes with its own set of challenges and blessings. Marriage, as wonderful as it is, is not always rainbows and butterflies. It's a journey that requires patience, understanding, and commitment. It's not uncommon for couples to face hurdles such as disagreements, financial struggles, or external pressures. These challenges, while daunting, are part and parcel of the marriage journey. They test the bond between couples and push them to strive for better communication and understanding. But let's not forget that every cloud has a silver lining. With these challenges come immense blessings. The beauty of marriage lies in the opportunity it presents for personal growth and deep, meaningful connection. In overcoming obstacles together, couples grow stronger and more resilient. The shared experiences, the laughter and tears, the triumphs and trials, they all weave together to form an intricate tapestry that is unique to each marriage. Marriage is also a blessing in the sense that it provides a space for unconditional love and support. It's having someone by your side, through thick and thin, who knows you at your best and your worst, yet loves you all the same. It's the joy of shared dreams, the comfort of a shoulder to lean on, and the peace that comes from knowing you're not alone. Moreover, marriage is a profound spiritual journey. It's about two individuals coming together to fulfill a divine purpose. It's about love, yes, but it's also about companionship, mutual support, and helping each other grow in faith and character. It's about reflecting the love of God in the way we love and care for our spouse. So as we navigate the waters of marriage, let's embrace the challenges and the blessings that come our way. Let's see the hurdles as opportunities for growth, not as stumbling blocks. Let's cherish the moments of joy and learn from the moments of difficulty. And above all, let's remember the divine purpose of our union and the blessings it brings. In the face of challenges, remember the divine purpose of marriage and the blessings it brings. Healthy marriages don't just benefit the couple, they have a profound impact on society as well. Let's delve deeper into the societal benefits of healthy marriages, which include stability, prosperity, and the well-being of future generations. In a world that seems to be constantly shifting, healthy marriages offer a sense of stability. They provide a steady foundation upon which families, communities, and entire societies can be built. When a marriage thrives, it creates a nurturing environment where respect, trust, and love flourish. These values are then passed down to future generations, creating a ripple effect that can positively impact society for years to come. Furthermore, healthy marriages contribute to prosperity in more ways than one might think. Financial stability is often facilitated by marriage, as couples typically pool their resources and share expenses, providing an economic advantage. But prosperity goes beyond the financial. It also encompasses emotional and mental well-being. The love and support found in a healthy marriage can foster personal growth and fulfillment, leading to a more prosperous life in a broader sense. Now let's consider the well-being of future generations. Children who grow up in a home where love, respect, and commitment are modeled through a healthy marriage tend to have better social, emotional, and academic outcomes. These children are more likely to establish healthy relationships and marriages of their own, perpetuating a cycle of positivity. In conclusion, healthy marriages do much more than make two people happy. They provide a cornerstone for stable, prosperous societies and play a crucial role in the upbringing of future generations. The effects of a thriving marriage can reverberate through time and space, touching countless lives in the process. Marriage as a divine institution has the power to shape society in profound ways. So, we've journeyed through the biblical perspective of marriage from its divine origin to its societal impact. Let's take a moment to revisit what we've learned. Marriage, as we've seen, is not a human invention. It's a divine arrangement originating from the heart of God Himself. From the very beginning, God saw the need for companionship, and so He created Eve as a suitable helper for Adam. The purpose of marriage, then, is not merely for procreation or societal norms. It's a sacred union that addresses the fundamental human need for companionship, providing a platform for shared experiences, mutual support, and deep personal connection. But marriage is not without its challenges. It requires commitment, sacrifice, and an unwavering dedication to love and honor one another. Yet, these challenges come with immense blessings. They shape us, refine us, and enable us to mirror God's love in a profound way. 
Furthermore, healthy marriages have a significant impact on society, fostering stability, nurturing future generations, and reflecting God's divine plan for human relationships. Remember, marriage is more than a human institution. It's a divine arrangement designed to bring companionship, face challenges, reap blessings, and shape society in meaningful ways.